Welcome to Getting Started with LifeHub. There are several ways to build a plan with LifeHub. If you have certain integrations, you can start with a household import of data from other software or data sources. But if you don't have those integrations set up yet, a good place to start is with Quick Create. Here you can quickly add all of the important ingredients, investment accounts, salaries, social security and pensions, as well as other assets and liabilities. With Quick Create, you can be off and running in just a few minutes. We can now refine the plan by editing things like income and expense timing, asset allocation, and more from within LifeHub. Alternatively, you can build a plan via the standard route. This starts with some basic information on the household and then allows you to enter detailed information on assets and income. You can add categories like expenses, savings, and insurance to the plan from the plus menu. LifeHub plans don't require you to enter expense information. That can be a little confusing if you're used to other planning software. The first question that generalized planning or accumulation planning software typically asks is, how much would you like to spend in retirement? In contrast, when you're building a LifeHub plan, the first question the software answers by default is, how much can I spend? That means that you don't need to start with a budget or a feel for client spending goals. That difference can be surprising, but it might help to notice that the question, how much can I spend in retirement is a bit like asking, how much do you earn in your working years? And it's a question that can be answered before exploring how much a household actually spends or would like to spend. Don't worry, if you do know how much clients spend or would like to create a plan that zeroes in on a particular net spending level, we'll cover that later. The first step in building a plan is typically to include all of the income and assets that fund life now or will fund life in retirement. Investment accounts, social security, pensions, and so on. If someone isn't yet retired, be sure to include current wages and any saving they're doing to investment accounts. The best practice here is to enter things as realistically as possible. Often that means treating them as monthly, not annual. Of course, if an income stream or savings plan really is happening annually or quarterly, go ahead and enter it that way. It's also important to choose the right account type for each investment account and set asset allocations and any specific restrictions on the accounts. For example, if a 401k is not available while the employee is still working, include that in the plan. If clients have non-qualified deferred comp or inherited IRAs that are distributing funds over a certain period of time, include that as well. Next, we add legacy and spending goals. If leaving a portfolio balance as part of a financial legacy is a high priority, add the legacy goal in the plan's advanced settings. If you add a legacy goal, the spending capacity in retirement will be lower because the app knows the client will have to spend less if they want to fund that goal. Spending goals in LifeHub come in two flavors, baseline and other variable. Other variable expenses are significant, lumpy, or temporary expense items. We're not talking about the basics of everyday living, like groceries, transportation, and so on. Instead, these are things like paying off a mortgage, a home purchase, or planning to self-fund future long-term care. To enter a mortgage, add a liability, and be sure to include the payments as an other variable expense. If you don't know the mortgage balance, you can just add the payments in the other variable expenses section. Just as with the portfolio legacy goal, other variable expenses will reduce what can be spent on everything else in life. For example, if I added a spending goal of gifting $1,000 a month to a grandchild for four years to help pay for college, the plan's spending capacity in retirement will go down in order to fund that gifting. Baseline expenses are different. If you're building a how much can I spend plan, baseline expenses will have no effect on spending capacity in retirement. If you're asking the app how much someone can spend in retirement, Baseline expenses are just there as a way to understand how what clients can spend 
compares to what they would like to spend. If, on the other hand, you're building a how can I spend X plan, you'll be targeting the plan's baseline expenses, net of taxes, and net of other variable expenses. You can enter baseline expenses in two ways on the expenses tab, either as a bottom line total or itemized. This is also where you can toggle the primary question of the plan between how much can I spend and how can I spend X. Here's an example. In this plan, I've added $10,000 a month in baseline expenses. Now this household's resources could actually support quite a bit more. And here we see that there's a surplus in the available income. That just means that if these clients spent what they could spend, they'd have some extra spending money. But if I switch this plan to target that $10,000 a month, the software will estimate how much needs to be drawn from accounts so that we can fund all and only the expenses in the plan, plus taxes. To review, you can build a LifeHub plan by importing data via an integration, by using Quick Create, which takes you to LifeHub quickly for additional fine tuning, or by using the standard route. Typically, you'll want to start with household resources and then add on legacy and expense goals. There are two kinds of expenses, other variable, which are used for significant temporary or lumpy spending, and baseline, which are steady, consistent expenses. Expense planning is, however, entirely optional in LifeHub. Finally, you can build two kinds of plans in LifeHub, a what can I spend plan, which figures how much a household's resources could support, and a how can I spend plan, which targets baseline expenses, net of taxes, and net of other variable expenses. In the next video, we'll wrap up with some more advanced topics.